Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and you can tell by the state of my hair dripping on my jumper that my bath has just been interrupted by the news that Slavisha Jakanovic has been made Sheffield United manager. If you go on the Blades website right now, you will see welcome Jokanovic. Jokanovic appointed Blades boss. And so the first big championship job that is available, and there are a couple with Sheffield United and West Brom both open at the start of today, has gone. And it is Jokanovic who will be the Blades manager. Remember, remember, these are the plum jobs, aren't they? A team relegated from the Premier League. Yes, there may be some sorting out to do. We'll have to talk about that. But Sheffield United up for two seasons. That is three years of parachute payments that Jukanovic finds himself involved in. And let's be very, very plain about this. Uh, Sheffield United and the higher-ups will expect Jukanovic to get Sheffield United promoted back to the Premier League. Like it or lump it, that is just the lay of the land in the Championship and in the second tier these days. Now, in terms of Sheffield United, obviously it was this great journey under Chris Wilder from League One, 100 points, stabilising the Championship. Uh, incredible promotion in 2018-19, second place, automatic ninth place in the Premier League. And then everything fell apart this season, didn't it? Inertia, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did a whole video about it. I've done a couple of videos about it. In fact, we won't go into that other than to say, look, Wilder is gone. And it really feels now today that this is definitely a new era at Sheffield United. And Wilder built Sheffield United on tactical innovation, um, character, personality, that 3-5-2 system. Being brave. Um, let's be honest, they had players way up the pitch for a, a lot of their games. They committed a lot of men forward and um, they were promoted in quite sort of thrilling fashion using this style. That is the kind of squad that's been left over. And Jukanovic, well, not too similar, I would suggest. I was one of the people saying a few months ago, well, Sheffield United, they're used to playing a three. What about Steve Cooper? He's used to playing a three. And it feels like they've gone for the manager they think that can do this job as opposed to trying to get someone to fit what they've got. And it it looks like, and sort of reading between the lines, that Jukanovic is going to be able to have a little bit of a reset, which we think Sheffield United may need purely in terms of team cycles, basically. And... Some of these players there have been with Wilder since day one, which uh, is 16-17. So it's been a long, long cycle for um, people like Ender Stevens and uh, Basham. Fleck has been there for the longest time. Even a lot of the guys that got them promoted now, that is a three-year cycle having ended. And it does feel that something new was needed. Uh, here is the words from the Sheffield United press people. Uh, thrilled to welcome Jukanovic as new manager, former Watford and Fulham boss. Three-year deal, the first overseas manager at the club. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, since 2019, he's managed, um, forgive my pronunciation here, uh, Al Garafa SC in Qatar. Um, a few people were disappointed by that because he was a real um, potential championship go-to guy. And, um, perhaps, you'd have to ask Mr. Yukanovich, perhaps it was a, a nice salary deal that got him over to Qatar rather than having another go in English football. Yukanovich played for Partizan, Tenerife, Depor, uh, Chelsea, a hugely successful playing career as well. And here's the key, here we go. Uh, led Watford to promotion in 2014, led Fulham to promotion in 2018. Now, this is where we get with some owners. They want a championship promotion on the CV, don't they? Jukanovic has two. I've got less to say about the Watford one than I do about the Fulham one because that Watford season, was it was Pozzo's 
wasn't it? And Watford actually had four managers during that season. So we're very much apples and oranges compared to what Jokanovic did at Fulham and what he did at, at Watford. Maybe it shows, um, you know, he can be a, a short-term fix in that somewhat chaotic at times Watford structure there. I'm not going to talk too much about that. That was the 14-15 season, wasn't it, when Watford, uh, Bournemouth and Norwich were promoted from the Championship. I can talk a lot more sensibly about the Fulham team, which I have to say, I come with a little bit of bias here. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching uh, Jokanovic's Fulham teams and they were promoted in 1718, but they did lose in the playoffs the year before. Both seasons, they went on late, late runs and what to expect tactically if he does the same thing, expect possession, possession, expect a 4-3-3, three, three. three at the back is done if Jukanovic is um, still the way we think he was at Fulham. Uh, rotation in midfield, you're going to have to be patient. Um, it took time uh, for things to click, but they were a really, really good watch, um, that Fulham team. And in the end, I can probably remember a lot of the players, but Look out for, it was a brilliant midfield three of Stefan Johansson, Tom Kearney and Kevin McDonald with a sitter, a playmaker and a number eight sort of in there. Yes, they had Mitrovic on loan, which is always a help in the championship, isn't it? But a young um, Ryan Sessignon doing really, really well. Ryan Fredericks down the other side. Uh, people like Naiskin's Cabano maybe on one wing. I can't quite remember the entire team. I'm doing well to remember that many. But it was very, very much play it out from the back, rotation in midfield, build up the play, create possession and create chances through dominating possession. It was that type of thing. If there are people who are going to be sitting in Bramall Lane who are going to be um, yelling, stop messing about with it, get it forward, get it forward, you may be in for um, a bit of a surprise there because it does need some patience, if indeed he bases the style on um, what Fulham did. So that would be my kind of perception of Jukanovic, good manager. And um, they got up through the playoffs in the end, too good for Villa. And like I said, both seasons, big, long, late runs, winning, 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 scoring, scoring, scoring. So um, I'm sure Blades fans would be very, very pleased to see that uh, replicated up at Bramall Lane. Uh, this is from Jukanovic. Honoured to become manager of this historic club. Grateful to all the higher-ups. Excited to work in English football. Again, looking forward to getting started. Um, prepare for the challenge in the Championship. I want to assure our major fans, fully committed to helping the team achieve its goals and make you feel proud of your support. We can make Bramall Lane a fortress. I have no doubt your voice will make a big difference. Um, all fairly sort of generic stuff from Jukanovic that you would expect him to be saying in a statement, here is Prince Abdullah, um, who can be quite honest, can't he? Um, over the past two months, undertaken a rigorous recruitment process in order to find the right person. Remember, Jokanovic, I believe, was under contract um, in Qatar at his club there. So they've obviously um, gone through the um, sort of rigours of what they need to do. They've been keenly conscious of the importance of this decision. Therefore, uh, considered many strong candidates have undertaken thorough due diligence uh, after an exhaustive evaluation, lots of long words in this, it was evident that Slavisa was the man we needed at the helm, uh, blah, 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 CV, proven track record in England and abroad. Um, so look, not too much in terms of, you know, sort of new information there. We know he's got the three-year contract, which, let's be honest, um, sometimes the actual length is not worth the paper it's written on, but essentially three years is the duration of the three years of parachute payments, which is a big, big help. A very, very different expectation on Sheffield United now than Chris Wilder had, for sure. No expectation on them getting up um, uh, in, definitely not in 2017, and barely in 2018-19 as well. Now, you guys know the score. Sheffield United are going to come down and they are going to be amongst the favourites. There'll be West Brom, there'll be Fulham. We'll see who doesn't go up in the playoffs. There's 
Bournemouth are still here. Uh, can Barnsley produce a second season? You then have your three old wizards, don't you? McCarthy at Cardiff, Hewton at Forest, Warnock at Borough, who will all make life hard. And then you've got disruptive um, clubs. Millwall will, you know, potentially be a challenge. You never know what Blackburn can do. Every season we can always pick out a lot of teams. But remember, ex-Premier League squads, parachute payments, the expectations are high for those teams. Let me know what you think of the appointment. My view is I like it. Um, I think he plays good football. It's a little bit different to um, Chris Wilder. I think a little bit less in terms of intensity in that play and they were non-stop under Wilder weren't they and the players would just keep getting forward down those sides creating those overlaps and underlaps with the centre halves and the wing backs and then a Norwood or a Fleck joining in off midfield and always a number 10 uh, with Wilder as well very brave very attacking you know, will attack in a different way look at that blade squad and I'm not suggesting these have been great servants at the club but Certain players of a certain age in terms of uh, a Billy Sharp, Dave McGoldrick, OK, he's done really well in the Premier League. But look at the age as well. Uh, Norwood himself, we've mentioned um, Basham. Um, again, players who've been there a long while, perhaps um, they're going to start building around a Bogle, Lowe, uh, Brewster. McBurney's there. I know he's got an injury, hasn't he? Um, and you would imagine as well, there would have to be a couple of sales um, to sort the cash flow out. And I'm thinking Jack O'Connell, although, will anyone touch him after the long injury straight away? Who knows? Um, Sander Berger as well, big fee for him. So I'm expecting some ins and outs, outs as well at Sheffield United. I'm expecting a fairly new look-ish team. Remember as well, there are players that Scott Parker has not been using at Fulham that Slavisa Jukanovic likes. I'm thinking Tom Kearney. Um, Steph Johansson was out on loan at um, QPR. Obviously, Mitrovic may be a little bit expensive, let's just say. But I don't know. I don't know whether there may have been texts exchanged, and um, particularly in terms of a, of a Tom Kearney type player. But he is the Fulham captain, but just not used in the, in the Premier League. I know there's been an injury as well. So... Lots and lots and lots going on at Sheffield United now. I like the hire. Um, I do think Blades fans are going to need to have some patience in terms of that pattern of play developing. And I do think it's a bit of a clean sweep. Uh, so if he can get them going during this first season, and history tells us that the two Fulham teams grew during the season, we may get... Slow start, big finish if Yukanovich gets it right. Again, I've had my say. You have yours in the comments. That are my first thoughts, excuse me, falling over all my words here, on Slavisa Yukanovich to Sheffield United. Let me know yours, Blades fans, Fulham fans, Watford fans. Um, get involved. First big managerial hire of the 21 22 championship season. We've not even had the playoff final yet. There we go. And thank you for watching. Um, let's get the debate going in the comments on this higher. Over and out.